What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be covering KNN. So it's a super easy algorithm so it should be a short video. So what is KNN? So it's a supervised method which means it has a dependent variable. It can be used for both regression and classification. So combine both numeric and categorical responses. It is a non-parametric method which means it doesn't estimate any parameters and it has one tuning parameter k which is the number of nearest neighbors so how does it work so say we're given two predictors x1 x2 and we're trying to predict y so here's x1 and x2 on a plot so how it works is it trains the algorithm and it's simply a memory based approach. So what this means is it simply memorizes where the observations are in space. And then when we want to predict a new observation, so say this is our new observation, and we want to get a prediction for our y or dependent variable. What it says is that if we take the k nearest neighbors and average their dependent variables together, we get an output. So here, say we use k is equal to 1, or we're only finding the first nearest neighbor. So that would be observation 1. So if we take the mean of the dependent variables, so here, observation 1 has a dependent variable value of 4, we just get a value of 4. So for this observation, it would make a predicted value of 4. Now if we use k is equal to 2, it's saying we take the two nearest observations. So that would be observation 1 and observation 2. So if we take the mean of the two nearest observations, it would just be 4 plus 5 over 2. So we get a value of 4.5. So make a prediction of 4.5 if k is equal to 2. Now if k is equal to 3, or we take the three nearest neighbors, which we can see are observation 1, 2, and 3, and just take the mean of these three values, so 4 plus 5 plus 8 divided by 3, and we get 17 over 3, which is equal to 6.33 would be the prediction. So last example, we said it takes the closest observations. Now when we say closest observations, is what, what we're talking about is the smallest Euclidean distance. So the formula for Euclidean distance is just going to be the square root of the summation of xi minus yi squared. So here's an example. Say we're given two predictors and we're using k and n for regression. So we're trying to predict a numeric output. So these are the observations we use to build our algorithm. And let's say we're trying to predict an observation of 4, 4. So what we have to start off by doing is finding the nearest observations. So we find the observation to distance 1 from point 4, 4. It's going to be the square root of our x1 value, which is 1, minus our x1 value and our new observation, which is 4, squared plus our x2 value, which is 2, minus our x2 value of our observation, which is 4, squared. So when, when we add those squared values up and take the square root, we get a value of about 3.6. So it's a Euclidean distance to observation 1 of 3.6. So now if we do the same thing for observation 2, we get 3 minus our value of 4 squared plus 4 minus our value of 4 squared. We take the square root and we get a Euclidean distance of 1. So we can do the same thing for the next two. So 7 minus 4 squared plus 7 minus 4 squared and we get a value of 4.2 and then finally, from observation 4 to our 4, 4 value, you get 5 minus 4 squared 
plus 11 minus 4 squared, which produces a Euclidean distance of 3.1. So now we have to choose our k value. Say we use k is equal to 1. So what this is saying is we only take the mean of the first nearest observation. So that would mean the smallest Euclidean distance, which is 1. So this is, produces observation 2. So if we take the dependent variable value for observation 2, which is 4, and then we average it, but it's only one observation, so we just get if we use k is equal to 1, we will predict a value of 4 for observation 4, 4. So now we can use k is equal to 2, which is just saying we take the two nearest observations, so a Euclidean distance of 1 and Euclidean distance of 3.1, so observation 2 and 4. So we take the average, so it's going to be 4 plus 9 over 2, so we get a value of 6.5. And then we can do k is equal to 3, so our third nearest observation that we're going to add is observation 1. So if we do 4 plus 9 plus our observation 1 dependent variable, which is 5, take the average, and we get a value of 6. Now K and N for classification works in the exact same way, except when we get our dependent variable, instead of taking the mean, we take the mode. So for instance, say this is the data we use to train our algorithm. So we have five observations and we're using fur length to predict what animal it is. So let's say we're trying to predict whether what animal an observation with a fur length of 11 is. So to do this we find the distances again. So to observation 1, the distance from 11 to 2, we take the square root of 11 minus 2 squared and this produces a value of 9. So if you notice, when we only have one predictor, the observation is just going to be the absolute difference. So for observation 2, it's just going to be 11 minus 4, which produces 7. And then for observation 3, 11 minus 7, which produces 4. Observation 4, 11 minus 9, which produces 2. And then observation 5, Again, it's just op absolute values, so 11 minus 12, we get a distance of 1. So now if we're trying to make a prediction from our observation of fur length 11, we just take the closest observation, which we see from the smallest Euclidean distance of 1. So we take observation 5, and it predicts cat. So the mode of cat is, of course, just cat. Now if we have k is equal to 2, it would take observation 4, which only has a Euclidean distance of 2, and 1. So we get cat, cat. So we just make a prediction of cat. And then k is equal to 3. Now it's going to add observation 3, which has a Euclidean distance of 4. So now it's going to predict cat, cat, dog. So we take the mode, so it's just going to be cat again. We use k is equal to 4. So now it's going to add observation 2, which is going to be cat, cat, dog, dog. So here we have a tie. So when you have a tie, it just randomly assigns whether it's going to be cat or dog. So for here we'll say it randomly assigns dog. So on the exam, of course, you're not going to have ties where you have to guess randomly. It'll be more clear cut. So then finally, if we have k is equal to 5, or all the observations, we have cat, cat, dog, dog, cat. So 3 out of 5 are cat, so it's just going to predict cat. K and N has a tuning parameter. So what a tuning parameter does is it allows you to control the flexibility of your model. So as k decreases, or we take smaller number of nearest neighbors, the flexibility increases. And this leads the bias to decrease and the variance to increase. So the bias decreasing is a good thing, but the variance increasing is a bad thing. Now as our k value increases, 
the flexibility decreases, which makes our bias increase and our variance decrease. So the bias decreasing, of course, is a bad thing, and our variance decreasing is a good thing. So this relates back to our, our square bias plus our variance trade-off. So as one increases, the other decreases. So they're always at odds with each other. So now we can go to the extreme. So if k is equal to 1, which is the smallest number of nearest neighbors we have, we can achieve, achieve a train mean squared error equal to 0. So this means if we use the same observations to test our data that we used to build our statistical learning technique or our KNN algorithm, it'll guess every observation perfectly. So this would probably be an example of an overfit model. And our goal is not to get the lowest train mean squared error, but to get the lowest test mean squared error. Now if instead we set k is equal to n, which is the highest k value we can choose, this is saying we take the average of every observation. So no matter what value we enter for our independent variables, it'll always produce the same value. So this would be the same as the null model. Or it's simply going to guess the mean. Now if we want to find the k that chooses the lowest test mean squared error, we're going to use cross-validation. But unfortunately we don't learn that until the next chapter. Advantages and disadvantages compared to simple linear regression. So we start with advantages. So because k and n is non-parametric and has no functional form, it's able to model highly irregular relationships. So it's highly flexible. So an example would be, say we have one predictor in our dependent variable. I want to say the true relationship wants something like this. So with K and N, if we had enough observations, we would be able to model something like this. But however, linear regression would try to form a straight line, which looks something like this, which clearly doesn't follow the flow of the data. Now the second advantage is K and N has a tuning parameter, or K. So this allows us to control the flexibility of our model. Which simple linear regression, of course, does not have. Now the disadvantages. So because k and n takes no functional form, like we can't do a y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x, we lose interpretability. So we can no longer say that with a certain increase in a parameter, we set, expect a certain increase in our dependent variable. And this also means we can't do any of the statistical tests on our parameters. So we lose interpretability. Second disadvantage is because it's so flexible that in order to model the data, we need a large number of observations. So since it has no functional form and can take really any shape, we need a lot of observations to make accurate predictions. Okay, so that wraps up chapter two. So next chapter, we're gonna be learning about multiple linear regression. We're gonna learn some feature selection techniques for that. And then we're gonna learn cross-validation. So I'll see you all for chapter three.